This video will help raise awareness of sickle cell trait and its impact on the student athlete participating in an intense exercise sessions. Specifically, the benefits of screening and knowing one's sickle cell trait status, the importance of properly structuring and conducting conditioning sessions, and precautions that can be implemented to allow student athletes with the trait to thrive in their sport. Sickle cell trait is not a disease. It is the inheritance of one gene for normal hemoglobin and one gene for sickle hemoglobin. Normally, very few problems occur. Sickle cell trait is not a barrier to playing competitive sports. However, it is possible symptoms may occur under extreme conditions of physical stress or low oxygen levels. Intense, sustained exertion with little recovery time, for example, repeated 100-yard sprints, have contributed to the collapse of student athletes with sickle cell trait. During a football conditioning session in 2006, Dale Lloyd II, member of the Rice University football team, collapsed at the conclusion of repeat 100-yard sprints and later died due to complications related to sickle cell trait. There is a very rare case here and there of an athlete with sickle cell trait who has uh, experienced sudden death during conditioning uh, that is related to the sickle cell trait. Fifteen cases in all of collegiate athletics over the past three or four decades. So this is not something that happens frequently, it happens rarely, but the numbers of cases uh, seem to be increasing as they are reported. Um, in, since 2000, there's been at least seven collegiate football deaths during conditioning related to this, this problem. However, there are other cases that have been described in basketball, uh, in track, uh, so it's not isolated entirely to football, and it's not isolated to just college athletics. There have been high school athletes that have collapsed and had sudden death with the same exertional sickling problem. Um, it was 1974 when the first college football player collapsed and died at the University of Colorado. That was sort of the first case that became known about what we're now describing. The, the sickle cell trait um, and my sports participation, you know, it impacts it a lot, especially when you know ahead of time and uh, with, the, with the medical procedures and the technology that we have right now, you know, you can understand, I can understand now more why I was getting winded at times when I didn't think I should be. The more medical information we know about our student athletes, the better equipped we are to help keep them safe. Although sickle cell trait is oftentimes associated with the African American population, it does occur rarely in Caucasians. As a matter of fact, my son David has tested positive for the sickle cell trait. Although sickle cell trait screening is now standard protocol at birth, many student athletes may not know whether or not they have the trait. Following the recommendations of the National Athletic Trainers Association and the College of American Pathologists, the NCAA recommends athletics departments confirm sickle cell trait status in all student athletes during the medical examination process. It's true that sickle cell trait is more common in the African American population at an 8% carrier rate. However, in today's homogenous society, anyone could be a carrier and therefore the sickle gene is a condition of inheritance versus race. So I would recommend that that parent contact the physician's office where the athlete was seen as a newborn and get a copy of that newborn screen result or confirmatory lab test if that was actually done. That would be the first step. If that's not possible, either uh, for whatever reason, they, they can't identify that physician, can't find that physician, can't get the result then it's going to require additional blood work to be done, which could be done through, again, their primary care doctor's office. If you don't know if you have the trait, a simple, inexpensive blood test can screen for sickle cell trait as an added component to the pre-participation medical examination. If found to be sickle cell trait positive, the student athletes should be offered counseling on the implications of sickle cell trait, including health, athletics, and family planning. Sickle cell trait does not go away over time, and athletes cannot be conditioned out of it. Sickle cell trait, traditionally, we have, we have t 
inform patients, and we've been taught uh, and believe that really very few sickle cell trait patients have any clinical problems at all that on a day-to-day -day basis their cells don't sickle, they function normally, they're not going to have pain, they're not going to have problems. So when we have uh, been counseling families about sickle cell trait, that's what we've told them about the patient. We've, we've counseled them because of family decision making uh, so that they know that they could have a child depending on the hemoglobin type of the partner with sickle cell disease. The, the importance of knowing your sickle cell trait status, uh, you know, because there's always going to be life after sports. So if you're knowing ahead of time and your significant other, to me, should have that same test because that can be the risk of one of your child, uh, children um, having sickle cell the disease. All coaches and student athletes should understand the risks involved with the rigors of sport participation. However, nothing is more frightening than the sudden collapse of an otherwise healthy athlete. Knowing a student athlete's medical condition and implementing appropriate precautions can enable them to succeed in sport and in life. There are simple precautions that can be implemented to prevent a catastrophic event. Develop a year-round strength and conditioning program. Train with pace progressions, allowing longer periods of rest and recovery. Learn the symptoms that your student athletes with sickle cell trait will present and stop their activity if they appear with muscle cramping, pain, swelling, weakness, difficulty breathing, or fatigue. Even though these signs and symptoms can occur in any student athlete, intervention for those with sickle cell trait is encouraged. Allow your athletes to immediately report any symptoms to the medical staff and or coaches without fear of punishment. Modify workouts. In condition of extreme heat or high altitude, or if the student athlete has a known illness, either adjust their workout with an emphasis on hydration and recovery or cancel their workout completely. Especially from a, from a sports standpoint is one thing, but from a life standpoint, you know, my son who's 13, you know, he's 14 now, he knows he has a sickle cell trait because we've already had him tested for that because his dad is a carrier of the trait. Even the most fit athletes with sickle cell trait can experience a sickling collapse. While the definite cause of collapse among sickle cell trait athletes is not yet known, one hypothesis about what may be happening is as follows. So what happens is these patients uh, during this extreme exertion, usually the first few minutes of exercise, uh, the red cells start to change shape. They start to log jam in the blood vessels. And so blood does not flow to the tissues normally. And so the tissues and muscles become deprived of oxygen. When that happens, the muscles become acidotic because there's an increased level of this substance called lactic acid. At the same time, the red cells become dehydrated, and, and then there's also a problem of, of overheating. So you have all of these things coming together, and uh, there's extreme, rapid breakdown of the muscle tissue. That's a condition called rhabdomyolysis, and the, the muscles start to break down, and that gives you these byproducts. As the muscles die, potassium in the bloodstream goes very high, and there are some other chemical changes, but when that occurs, your kidneys can fail and you can go into an arrhythmia and your heart just stop. Athletes with sickle cell trait may require extended recovery periods between sets and reps in order for their bodies to recover. Remember, the most recent cases of sudden death of NCAA student athletes with sickle cell trait have occurred during conditioning activities. They have to open up those lines of communication in order to maximize the training effect that we don't over push you that cause an injury or really not stimulate you enough that you not get the type of adaptation that's necessary. But what's critical is the coach knows his athletes or her athletes. And with that open lines of communication, it's, it's a, it's a two-way street. Athlete speaks to the coach, coach speaks to the athlete. In my own experience as a coach, I've always had excellent lines of communication with my athletes. I knew exactly how much I can push. And also when the athlete said, listen, it's a little bit too much today, we back off. Also, the coach has to realize environmental conditions that surrounds the workout. Always programs need to be adjusted depending upon the environmental conditions of the day. That's for the returning athlete, the athlete that the coach is familiar with. Let's review precautions for student athletes with sickle cell trait. Student athletes with sickle cell trait should set their own pace, engage in a slow and gradual preseason conditioning regimen to be prepared for sports-specific performance testing and the rigors 
of competitive intercollegiate athletics. Build up slowly while training, e.g. paced progressions. Use adequate rest and recovery between repetitions, especially during gassers and intense station or mat drills. Modify all-out exertion of any kind beyond two or three minutes without a breather and discourage pushing or urging along, especially during signs of discomfort. Use sports-specific performance tests. Excuse student-athletes from performance tests such as serial sprints or timed mile runs, especially if these are not normal sports activities. Stop activity immediately upon struggling or experiencing symptoms such as muscle pain, abnormal weakness, undue fatigue, or breathlessness. Stay well hydrated at all times, especially in hot and humid conditions. Maintain proper asthma management. Refrain from extreme exercise during acute illness, if feeling ill or while experiencing a fever. Access supplemental oxygen at altitude as needed. Seek prompt medical care when experiencing unusual distress. Athletes should see a physician or certified athletic trainer if they are sickle cell trait positive and have noticed visible blood in their urine, experience a side hitch, lower chest pain, nausea, or vomiting, experiencing unusual muscle weakness or generalized pain, are planning to exercise or compete at a new location above 5,000 feet, are dehydrated.